Hello everyone! Today I will introduce to you some of the basic classification functions in LiDAR 360 MLS. Within the classification page, there are generally two kinds of basic classification functions. The first is based on parameters to extract a certain type of point cloud, such as in classify air points and classify ground points, and can be adjusted according to the different parameters set. The second is based on existing vector line or vector surface data, whereby the user can redefine existing categories such as in classify by attribute. Now, I will introduce several commonly used classification functions. The first is classify air points. Air noise, as the name implies, is discrete at some valuable points. For example, the data I am opening now has a lot of noise in the collected data due to dust on the laser. This makes the data difficult to apply in the subsequent production process, and thus it is necessary to remove the air noise. Within the Classify Air Points interface, select the original category information. Since the data is not classified, the original categories are all unclassified points. Choose which category to classify the air noise into. For example, I have classified it into the category of 10. Neighborhood point control is used to determine whether a point is a noise. It will calculate the standard deviation of the average distance between each point and the current neighborhood point and compare it with the set standard deviation multiple so as to achieve air noise removal. When these parameters are set, click OK to run. After the classification is completed, the software will switch to display by category by default. It can be seen that most of the air noise has been separated. Then, we can extract by category. Remove the air noise, or when extracting, remove the category of air noise. Another commonly used classification function is classify ground points, which applies the cloth simulation filter. According to different terrains, choose the appropriate scenes model and then set the grid size, classify threshold, and max iteration. Then, we can classify the ground points. Divide the original category into the set target category. This data is also unclassified. The original point category is category 1, and the ground point is set according to standard 2. Click OK. After the classification is completed, the software will switch to display by category by default. In this mode, it can be seen that we can extract most of the ground point categories. Now, the ground points can be easily obtained for subsequent applications. Another commonly used mode is classify by attribute, in which we can merge or remap categories as well as filter according to attributes. For example, in the intensity information we chose here, only points in the selected range that have an intensity value between 0 and 65,535 will be assigned to another category. If it exceeds this range, it will not be assigned to this category. Now, let's discuss this software's unique functions of classify by polygons and classify by polylines. Classify by polygons refers to the method of classifying the input category according to a certain vector surface layer, and then mapping the point cloud belonging to this vector surface layer to a certain category. For example, here, my zebra crossing is placed in the crosswalk layer, and then we divide the ground points and map the points belonging to the zebra crossing range to category 10, and click OK. At this time, switch to display by classification, and we can see that the ground point point cloud within the range of the zebra crossing vector surface layer is now mapped into a new category. In this way, we can quickly classify the point cloud in the region of interest based on a vector surface object. Classify by polylines allows the user to map a certain source category into a target category within a buffer range according to a specified linear layer. For example, here, the current linear layer is the lane line layer, and now we can divide the ground points according to this line. 
The buffer is set to 0.15 meters, which is the exact width of the marked line. Now we can classify it into category 19 and click OK. At this time, switch to display by category and we can see that we've expanded a buffer zone with a width of 0.15 meters to the left and the right according to the position of this line. And within this range, these point clouds are mapped into another category. Classify by polygon and polyline can be applied to speed up data annotations. Such as when performing a fine classification of ground points, we can mark the point cloud according to the vector and use these marked point clouds as samples for training. Finally is the classify by cluster size function, which allows the user to cluster the input source category and determine whether the cluster size in the selected area is within the set threshold range. This method is more suitable for use if certain data is misclassified after deep learning, such as tree trunks, which may be misclassified into the category of pole and can be corrected quickly. Here is a demonstration of the classify by cluster function after deep learning. In this example, there are some misclassified tree trunks. First, we need to change the set source category from rod to tree. Then, set a maximum length, width, and height. This refers to the length, width, and height of each cluster after performing the classify by cluster function. For example, we can roughly measure the height of the pole before performing the cluster function and can see here that it is about 3 meters. Thus, we set the height to 3 meters and the width and length at 1 meter. Because these tree trunks are not very thick, we can also choose the global mode which allows the user to cluster and classify all the data in the project. Alternatively, we can choose Select by Polygon mode. It is recommended to use Select by Polygon for data with large expanses of area. Here, select an area in the point cloud by drawing a polygon and click OK. Now, it can be seen that the tree trunk has been quickly divided and this value can be adjusted in real time while continuing to classify. This concludes the video on basic classification functions in LiDAR 360 MLS. Thank you for watching!